Hi, Jacob Field here from Ripe House Advisory. Recently, Ali, one of our partner buyers agent within the organisation, was asked by a client, can you please also let me know what factors you have considered that show we are set for 12% capital growth in 2022? This was a projected figure that was provided. As the property market is projected to slow down, Okay, so really unpacking this, how can we justify 12% projected per annum capital growth for 2022 when there's all this negative sentiment about a market slowdown? I wanted to firstly dive in here and say, is there really a market slowdown? Let's unpack that. This was an article published a couple of days ago, May the 2nd, 2022, on the Financial Review. Okay, obviously it's talking about property prices falls to accelerate. Sydney drops for third month. It was the same story across news.com, Sydney Morning Herald, etc, etc. We are in a negative news cycle for property. All right, we've got interest rate rises talked about on the horizon, most likely in the next couple of weeks. We've got federal election. We've got global uncertainty. The media love to pick up on sentiment and they keep driving the message home. We are in a negative news cycle, so the outcome of this article is negative. I know how this works. My wife, Anna, and I, we used to own Australian Property Investor Magazine. It was the largest property investment publication back when magazines were a thing. We had 130,000 people per month reading that magazine. I understand how negative and positive news cycles work in the property investment industry. Let's dive down a little bit further into this article. This is in the same article quoting research from CoreLogic, a very reputable source. We can see the capital city growth movement for the month of April, one month. You can see Sydney and Hobart had a small retraction. Okay, we're talking two to 3% per annum retraction. Very minor retraction, which is a very normal thing on a month to month basis. The overall article focused on this negativity and they ignored this positivity, right? This is a negative news cycle. We have to cut through this. In the same month, Brisbane or Adelaide grew 1.9%. That is huge. Brisbane, 1.7%. That's 20% or more capital gains per annum when you annualise that. The, you know, we are in, in the key markets, a strong, very strong growth upswing growth cycle. All right. Adelaide and Brisbane are absolutely pumping on all cylinders. You know, Perth and Darwin, areas that we're really focusing on now as investors with great potential, are still averaging 10% per annum likely growth or projected growth. So this is the key. Negative news cycles. We've got to cut through them as investors, ignore them. This article has chosen to focus on this very small outcome here. We all know that Sydney is in a contraction phase. We all know that Sydney is still confused and going through a consolidation period potentially for its next upswing. We all know that Sydney uh, and Melbourne and Hobart have been in very long, prolonged growth cycles. This is a very natural thing. We've got to cut through this. So firstly, is short-term sentiment negative? No, it's not. Short-term segment is actually very positive. Look at Adelaide and Brisbane. Okay, let's continue down this cycle. Why and how could we potentially predict 12% capital growth. Well, firstly, we're not predicting it across the whole country. We're predicting 12% or more capital growth in the key investment grade locations in 2022. And who are we to predict this? And who are we to say this? Well, this is our track record. You can see going back to March 2015. Okay, this is seven years ago. This is when we started publicly disclosing our suburb level recommendations. We were on the cover story of Money Magazine right back then in 2015 when we picked 120 streets across the whole country to focus our investments in. Since this time, our suburb level recommendations have averaged over 15% per annum capital growth. All right. You can see when the market has slowed down in 2018, 2019, we continued our merry run very consistently, very stable. That is because we're not investing in the Sydney and Melbournes, we're not investing in the markets that are contracting, we are investing in areas that are exhibiting very similar buying signals this year 
We don't invest in them the next year. We find other areas that are very similar. So our growth trajectory is very stable and consistent. Our algorithm has been improving. It, we are a pioneer in Australia for predictive analysis in property investment. And our algorithm, as you can see here from 2015, we are a research company. It's continued to get better and better and better. And our results in 2021 uh, were off the charts, outstanding. Obviously, the market itself grew very strongly for that year, but we even then outperformed the market. So how can we predict 12% per capital growth for 2022? Well, it's less than our long-term performance for the, almost the last 10 years. That's why we can predict it, because we've done this very consistently in the past, and we are targeting very specific locations, not the whole country. Last year, as an example, we averaged 24% capital growth. So even 12% is half what we delivered last year. Our algorithm is very well tested and it is getting better. But we are still pessimists. We still like to under-promise and over-deliver. 12% projected per, per, per capital growth for 2022 is actually still half of what we delivered to over our last 300 purchases uh, for the year of 2021. This is an example of how we move into a market. We were the first investment group uh, en masse to come into Toowoomba. We absolutely hammered the market, over 100 purchases in one year. And now every man and his dog has been talking about Toowoomba for the last few months, we're not there, poof, we're gone. All right, this is something that has been not just a, um, let's zoom right here on Toowoomba, right? This is our actual purchase map. We can zoom out and see that this is uh, something that is very common as a business. Sorry, I'm just fumbling around. We invest across the country, all right? So this is just not an aberration. We are investing across the country for these types of returns. So this is 2021, okay? This is how you have to put the 12% projected property price growth into a lens. We are finding those key markets one after another and it's a moving feast. We are targeting them for returns. The third key element, why are we going to achieve 12% projected capital growth in 2022 is negative real interest rates. Okay, I created a 25 minute video, uploaded it to the Ripe House Advisory YouTube channel if you wanna see more uh, on this topic because it says that as interest rates rise, property prices rise with them. It might sound crazy, it might sound counterintuitive, I'll explain it. What causes interest rate to rise? Well, it's inflation. When inflation is higher than interest rates, it means we have negative real interest rates. Negative real interest rates means that our debt is devaluing faster than the interest we're paying back to the bank. All right, just think about that for a moment. An investment, uh, the loan itself is an asset that is delivering us a return. All right, when you combine that with you're using that debt to buy property, where the intrinsic value of that potentially is still increasing, we have capital gains and our debt is devaluing faster than the interest we're paying back. We have a double whammy. The smart money piles into property when there are negative real interest rates. If you're still doubting that, because this is a graph of property prices plotted against inflation over the last 120 years. You can see the red line, when inflation goes up, property prices go up. When inflation goes down, property prices go down. This is net change per annum of property prices. When inflation goes up, property prices go up. You can see this pattern has repeated for 120 years in Australia. You can see even in the last 30 years when the RBA has had a target inflation rate of two to 3%, far more stable, even when we had small increases in inflation, we had very large increases in property price growth. This pattern repeats itself. This is the third reason why we are likely to see a projected capital growth of 12% or more in key investment grade locations in 2022. Element number four, labor are the strong favorites to win the next federal election in the next few weeks. They're paying $1.40 at the bookie. Liberal is paying $2.90. Labor over the weekend have released a flagship policy, which is, for me, absolutely bonkers. It's a crazy policy. It was recommended to them by the Grattan Institute, and all it's gonna to serve to do is create a massive big rocket under property prices for the sub $500,000 price range. 
I'm forecasting 30% property price increases for the sub $500,000 price range. If you want to understand why this is likely to occur, check out this video link here or the Ripe House Advisory YouTube channel. Yesterday I released a 10 minute video dive in, diving into this. Basically at a high level it means that the government is willing to pay people 30 to 40% of the purchase price as a lump sum payment where they don't have to make any repayments on that until they sell the property. It means they're not paying interest on that, it's not affecting their servicing, the banks still loan them their big amount of money and the government then goes and whacks 30 to 40% on top of it. All right, so instantly the spending power of uh, many 10,000 individuals per annum increases. It might not sound like much, but for sub $450,000 properties, that is one in 10 people suddenly have 30 to 40% more to spend on properties. It's crazy what this is going to do to property prices, right? So you can see, we don't have a crystal ball, okay? This is all in the future, projections, but you can see with these four elements how we can justify 12% projected growth in 2022. If you buy now, that is your first year of investing. All right, it's our track record, 15% per annum or more cash flow, capital growth for the last seven years. It is half of what we delivered last year. We see negative real interest rates where we have interest rates rising and property prices typically rise with them over the last 120 years. And we see labor stimulating the economy through property. If labor get in, which I'm most likely to be getting in, then property prices are gonna have a big rocket place under them. If liberal still in, then liberals still have their pro-property pro, pro, pro policies already in place. So 12% when you understand all of this and understand we are only buying in very specific locations is a very fair projected assessment of what we're likely to deliver in 2022. Hopefully this makes sense and thank you for your time.